I like this. I like that when CAD files are imported into SketchUp, they're imported with this group or component wrapper around it because it means that I don't even have to use the edges that I've imported from CAD. I can simply take the rectangle tool and draw a big old rectangle in the model, then take push-pull and pull that rectangle up and type in a distance like maybe 12 feet. Now another option here for determining the height of the wall is to take the push-pull tool and I like just picking on the highest point in the model, which in this case is the ridge line for the top of the sloped roof here in the drawing. So once you click on the top surface of the box or of the rectangle, you can bring your push-pull cursor all the way over and then click on the highest point in the elevation of your drawing. That way you know that you've got walls now that are tall enough to essentially meet the roof or meet the ceiling anywhere in the drawing. And from here, if I orbit underneath so that I can see underneath the box, click on the surface, and then I can just snap right to the edge in the CAD plan. So again, click on the surface, move the cursor over, and then click right on the edge in the CAD plan. From here, we want to go through the process of taking push-pull to draw in all of the exterior walls, just the exterior walls, not the interior ones. We'll get to those in just a second. So now that we've got the first wall, it's tall enough to meet the highest height requirement of any of the walls around the exterior or perimeter of the building, and it's the perfect width. We've used push-pull to get it to meet the width of the wall. Now we can use push-pull again and just pull the end cap of the wall all the way across so that it ends up perfectly at the corner. For the next wall, and you can notice the direction that I'm going. I started in the back wall and I'm going to kind of come around the kitchen and around the back side of the building. So this next corner, the way that we're going to get that in is to take the move tool, then tap the option key if you're on a Mac, or if you're on a PC, tap the control key. You should see that little plus symbol that shows up right next to the move cursor. If you bring the move cursor over now, you can click on the vertical edge of the wall and then copy that edge over. While you're copying the edge over, if you notice that you're moving along the red axis direction, you can tap the right arrow key to lock the red axis direction. Then move the cursor down and click right on the bottom endpoint. You should see a little pop-up that says constrained online from point, and from there you can click to set a copy of the edge over. I'm just going to do that one more time in case you missed it. Here I'm going to take the move tool, tap the option key, click on the edge to start copying it over along the red axis direction, then press the right arrow key to lock the red axis inference. Once you tap that right arrow key, you should be able to move the cursor anywhere in the model and see that the line is only moving along the red axis. If for some reason it's not picking up or you're still able to move the line around in a bunch of different directions, just tap the right arrow key again until it registers. It's a toggle, so tapping it a second time is going to release that restriction. But again, if you just tap the right arrow key, it should restrict the movement of that edge out along the red axis. Now you can move the cursor down and actually click down on the bottom endpoint to set the edge over. We've just copied the edge over exactly the width of the next wall. Now we can take push-pull and pull this surface out and bring it all the way over to the next wall. You can see the, next, the edge of the next wall here. And click on that edge to set that wall at the right length. We're just going to repeat this process a couple of times until we've got most of the exterior walls drawn in. So move tool, option key, start moving the edge. Along the green axis direction, it's going to be the left arrow key. Then take push-pull and pull that across. Again, for this side, take the move tool, tap the option key, copy the edge over. Since we're along the red axis direction, we can tap the right arrow key and click on the bottom. Then take push-pull and pull this across. Again, take the move tool. I'm using keyboard shortcuts here too, so if you don't see me, come over and click on the icon. Just kind of pay attention to either the words that I'm saying or pay attention to the icon. If I just press the letter M, I can grab the move tool. Then the option key, go to click 
to start moving the edge over. Left arrow key to lock to the green axis. Then click on the bottom corner to set it over. Take push pull and pull it out across to the end. Now, the part where this kind of starts to get a little bit tricky is when you're dealing with walls in the model that are at an angle relative to where we've started the drawing. So here again, we just want to take the axes tool and set the axes so that they are in line with the part of the building that's off at an angle. From here, we can start drawing our walls again, just with a rectangle, take push pull, we'll pull this rectangle up to meet the other wall, and then set the width so that it's the right width. Pull this out and line it up and pull this out and line it up. Now take the move tool again, copy that edge over and copy this edge over. Now we can take push pull and pull these surfaces all the way over to meet up with each other. For the most part, one of the easiest things to do is to just get the walls so that they completely cross through each other, especially at the angled bits. Then you can take the select tool and with a crossing window, you're able to select all of the edges and surfaces that are overlapping each other. You'll see in this case, I also got the plan. If I hold down the shift key with the select tool, I can deselect the plan. All of the edges and surfaces that are connecting to each other now I can right click and select the option for intersect selected. That's going to intersect all the surfaces together. And then I can just come back with the eraser tool and erase the extra parts like these two lines here on the top and the two lines down at the bottom. The other one's a little bit trickier because the lines or the walls aren't going all the way through each other. Here I can erase the edges on the top and then go into x-ray view mode. There you can either use the x-ray button up in the display mode toolbar. I have it set as a keyboard shortcut to the letter X. The x-ray mode is a toggle, so if you go into x-ray mode once, all of the surfaces will be viewed as transparent. If you tap x-ray mode a second time, everything comes back to being opaque. So here in x-ray mode, I can use the eraser tool to erase the edges down at the bottom, turn x-ray mode off, and then the quick trick here for getting this wall to all work out the right way is to take push pull, push this back to the point, take the select tool, pre-select the vertical edge, then with the move tool we can just move that edge over and snap to the point where that edge is supposed to be on plan. Now I can take the eraser tool and just erase the extra edge there on the surface.